G'day poker people, welcome back. After a week of getting run over in Hollywood, Florida, my mate and I returned to Tampa to grind out some cash game action. Since we were such good renters the first time we stayed in Tampa, we actually had a pretty good relationship with the host of the Airbnb and he said that he would give us a really good rate on a room if we booked out for more than a month. Since we only had six more weeks left in America before our tourist visas expired, we decided to lock it in. We booked the next six weeks at this Airbnb right near the Seminole Hard Rock Tampa which meant we were locked in. We had nothing to do these next six weeks except for put in that work. Of course, not only was I excited to spend all this time playing poker, but being in Tampa meant that I was pretty close to Brennan, which I was very excited about. But this isn't a romance vlog. I know y'all are here for the poker, goddammit. Let's hop into the first hand of my first week back in Tampa. Let's go! First hand up, we're in a 2-5 game, but we've got the button straddle on, then the action falls to my cutoff with 7-6 of hearts. I go ahead and make it 35, and then a tight aggressive button calls. So we're heads up to a flop of 8-5-4 with two hearts. This is an above average flop in my humble opinion. So when the action's on me, I decide to go ahead and bet it for 50 here. Check raising might be a better play in retrospect, but can't go wrong with betting the nuts with the redraw to the super nuts. I make a 50 and then the villain calls. So we get to see a turn. Is the seven of spades. So now it does put out a four liner to any six and we do lose to nine six. But even if the opponent does have a six, we're going to be free rolling in with our flush draw. So I don't see any reason to slow down here. I go ahead and bet 100 and then the button raises it up to 200. And at this point, I'm fairly certain they're not bluffing, not only because they're a tight aggressive player, but also we're back in Tampa. People don't bluff as much in Tampa. So I think the best play probably is just to go ahead and rip it all in here. I think like pretty much all the time, they're gonna have a six here. We will be pretty unlucky to run into nine six, but even if we do, we're not completely dead because we still have our straight flush draw. So I go ahead and rip it all in for 415. The villain snap calls. I show my monster hand and then the villain shows nine six off suit. So, oh my God, they actually cool the heart out of us, hitting their gut shot to go straight over straight against us. Fortunately, we do have a lot of outs to hit our flush on the river. And then the river is the five of hearts. Oh my God, I actually not only suck out and I make a straight flush, but I also end up winning a $700 high hand with my eight high straight flush. What a warm welcome back to Tampa. Let's go. What a ripper start to the session. Let's keep the ball rolling, see if we can continue to run good. The under the gun player goes ahead and open limps and then a loose aggressive hijack makes it 20. The action's on my button. I have ace two of spades. I just like to three bet it to 70 here. Definitely on the looser sides of things, three betting this hand. But like I said, in the tighter tempo dynamics, I think aggressive three bets are gonna be better to lean towards those players than the passive calling or folding options, in my opinion. So I go ahead and make it 70 and then the under the gun player and the hijack both call. So we're three ways to a flop, jack nine, four, all spades. Yeah, I think I'm running good this session. And just when you thought I was running good, things get even better because the under the gun player just leads shoves all in for 380 as an over bet of the pot. The hijack falls, I go ahead and call with the nuts here. And then we see a run out, the turns, the eight of clubs and the river's the nine of hearts. So it's actually a bit of scare card pairing the board. I definitely think the opponent could have a set. And what do you know, the opponent turns over. Pocket ace with a spade. Extra! So there you go, they did end up making their full house. They did go run a runner for it. Maybe I'm not running quite as good as I thought I was. Let's see if we can turn things around. We've got a button straddle on this hand. Small blind open limbs. Then a tight aggressive under the gun player makes it 20. I'm in the cutoff with ace five of clubs. If I'm three betting ace two suited, I'm definitely three betting ace five suited. I go ahead and make it 70. The small blind folds and the under the gun player calls. So we're heads up to a flop of ace queen nine rainbow. The opponent checks it over to me here. If I was gonna check an ace in this spot, I think my weaker aces like ace five would make for a good check option, but you really can't go wrong with betting top pair for value in general, in my opinion. So it could go either way. In this instance, I went ahead and bet 50. And then things get interesting because the under the gun player check raises. 
to 100. So an actual min click, check raise. Look, I just state the obvious right away. I'm not gonna fold getting this price, particularly when I have top pair, particularly when I have the backdoor nut flush draw, particularly when I have position. So no chance I'm folding here. I will say if the opponent did use a larger size, I would consider folding just because I'm gonna give him credit for all of the two pair combinations on this board, all the pocket queens, all the pocket nines as well. And maybe even like an ace king, because like I said, people don't fall about ace king and pocket queens in Tampa very often. So I do lose to a lot on this board. So there is a bit of concern, but I think the fact they made it so small, I can't be going anywhere. I throw in the call and we do get to see a turn, which is a good one. It's the Azure Diamonds, it gives us trips and counterfeits queen nine, if that is one of the two pairs the opponent was check raising. Then the opponent goes ahead and bets 100. So another pretty small bet here. Definitely don't think we can be folding a hand this strong to a bet this size. Can't be raising for value either. If we do raise, queen nine's folding. Maybe we can get called by jack 10, but like I said, I'm still concerned. I'm behind ace king, ace queen, Ace nine, pocket nines, pocket queens. It's a lot I lose too. So got to proceed with a bit of caution. So I only throw in the call and then we do get to see a river, which is a good one. It's a five of bays. Let's go. We make aces full of fives. We now have a full house. And yet again, the opponent goes ahead and bets 100. So yeah, they're really in love with just throwing like single black chips into the pot at this point. I think really not concerned. I'm behind with my ace five now. I think it's pretty likely the opponent is either bluffing with jack 10, maybe turning queen nine into a bluff. It's pretty unlikely since so many aces are out there, but the opponent could still have ace king or ace jack that they're trying to eke out a bit of small value with, maybe even trying to induce a bluff with a small bet. So I definitely think there's merit to raising with ace five here. Having said that, I don't think we can, we can go too big. They are blocker betting an ace king or an ace jack. They're probably not gonna call a huge bet anyway. So I think a, a small raise is in order here. That's what I did in game. I went ahead and made it 275. And then the opponent kind of groans a bit, throws in the call. When it's not a snap call, we're loving life. Or when it's not a re-raise, we're loving life, I should say. Anyway, I'll show my ace five and the villain marks, let's go. Let's see if we can keep this ball rolling. We've got another button straddle on, a loose aggressive big blind raises it up to 70, a tight aggressive hijack calls, then the action's on my cutoff and I look down at some good news. It's the pocket rockets, pocket aces, let's go. I three bet it up to 275 and then both the villains call. So we're three ways to a flop, seven, five, four, rainbow. And then the big blind open shoves all in for 625. The hijack folds. I will say I'm somewhat concerned because I do lose to all the sets on this board. Wouldn't shock me if the villain had eight, six either, or maybe even two pair but definitely not gonna be folding aces. They could be bluffing. There's a lose aggressive opponent, any six is an open-ended straight draw. And if they did have like pocket jacks through pocket eights, I wouldn't be totally shocked either. Anyway, that's basically me taking a million words to say I make the very easy call here with my aces. And then the villain shows five, four off suits. So they did make one of those two pairs. Although if we're gonna be behind, this is one of the better hands for us to be behind against because we've got a lot of outs to counterfeit them. The board runs out, queen of diamonds, Six of clubs. So unfortunately we do not count and fit the two pair and they end up raking in this pot. God dang. Let's see if we can bounce back from this one. I'm under the gun with a 10, nine of hearts. I go ahead and make a 15, definitely on the looser side of opens for an under the gun range, but let's not be pre-flop police here. I make a 15 and then I get three calls. So we're four ways to a flop of a jack four, three rainbow with one heart when the action checks to me. We do have a few backdoor draws, but I really don't want to bluff into three people with almost complete air so I check try to see a free turn and then we do get a free turn because the button checks and the turn is the two of hearts so we do make our flush draw when the blinds check it over to me here I could go either way between checking and semi bluffing here we do have really low showdown value and pretty good equity plus I don't think the the blinds range is that strong I think if they had a hand that was a jack or better they probably would have bet on the turn some concern because the button definitely could have turned a straight or two pair on this turn so yeah I do think they do have some strong hands in in their range, so merit to checking for that reason. Could go either way. I checked in game, and then the button goes ahead and bets 50. The blinds fold, and now we've got a pretty interesting choice because the button did use a larger bet size, so I'm getting an awful price to draw to our flush draw out of position. Having said that, I, like I mentioned earlier, I do think the button has a lot of strong hands in their range. So if we do hit our heart on the river, I think it's likely that we do get a check raise paid off. So gonna be some implied odds to getting there in the river. I do decide to call. I think if I had the decision back, folding might be a little bit better facing this large of a bet, but it's not what I did in game. I threw in the call and we are heads up to the river. 
It's the five of diamonds. So we miss with our heart draw. But what's interesting about this river, there's now a four liner to any ace or any six. And I'm gonna have a lot of ace in my range. Pretty much all the ace of hearts combinations. Maybe I made like a really loose float on the turn, like ace king offsuit or something. So I do think if we lead here, it would be like credible that we do have a lot of made straights on this board. So it kind of makes me want to bluff when I only have 10 high here. So that's what I do. I go ahead and bet a 125, and then the villain pretty much snap calls. Well, shit, we're not going to win this hand. I show my 10 high, and then the villain shows ace two of diamonds. So there you go. They were not very strong on the turn, so my read on that was bad. And, and also, this river clearly wasn't a good one for us to lead since they led an ace -X combination on the turn. So yeah, pretty pretty shambles hand from, in terms of how I played it, to be honest. So fast forwarding a few days and I'm looking to get into a 2-5 game, but there's a big list. So I hop in a 1-2 game whilst I wait. And when I sit down at the table, someone's like, oh, hey, your lead bet's from YouTube, right? And I'm like, yeah, this was kind of crazy. I've been recognized a few times in Australia, but this was the first time anyone recognized me in Florida. So that was really cool that he said hi like that. Shout outs to this guy. He seemed like a really nice guy and everything. And as fate would have it, really the only interesting hand I played at one two was against him in this hand. We got a $5 button straddle on. You straddle for five in one two games. I'm assuming to make the dealer's life easier, not having to do change for $4. Anyway, I'm in the small blind. And yet again, pocket aces, let's go, my favorite hand. And I get to raise a preflop yet again. I make it 25. And then our friend in the big blind calls as to two other people. So we're four ways to a flop, 10, three, three with two spades. The action's on me here. Definitely wouldn't hate checking out of position to three different people, but when you've got pocket aces, usually not gonna go wrong by betting it. I go ahead and make it 35 here. And only my friend in the big blind calls. So we're heads up to a turn. It's the Ace of Diamonds, let's go. We make a full house here. Now I think it's interesting whether we wanna check or go all in here. The SPR is less than one, so if we're gonna bet, probably should be all in. I just like to check it here. I think the opponent is gonna have a few aces in their range that are probably just gonna go all in themselves. If that's the case, we just kinda of wanna free roll a bluff or maybe just free roll them potentially hitting their spade draw on the river. So I go ahead and check it over to them. They rip it all in for 140. I snap a rooney call. I show my pocket aces and then the opponent shows ace king. It's an absolutely sick cooler, rivers of seven of diamonds. And then what do you know, right as the dealer is pushing the pot towards me, I hear over the loudspeaker, Lee, your 2-5 seat is ready. Oh my God, I felt so bad because this guy was so nice. He was a fan of the channel and everything, but I did come to the casino to play 2-5. So I ended up racking up my chips and leaving. My friend in the big blind, he didn't really say anything as I left. He seemed like a chill guy, so I hope he wasn't too offended or hurt by the hit and run. Huge shout outs to you if you're watching. I don't know if you still are watching after that hand though. So after the dirty hit and run, uh, we don't get punished at all because I have pocket kings under the gun in the 2-5 game. And I actually decide to raise it up to 25 here, which is a stark contrast from my usual 15 open at 2-5. I was trialing out a 5x open essentially because my mate that was staying in the Airbnb with convinced me that like, look, if people are playing passive preflop, you just want to build up the pot as large as you can. I think there's a lot of merit to this point. Since this trial period of the 5x opens, I have gone back to a 3x open. I think both race sizes are fine. Honestly, I wouldn't hate going less than a 3x open. I just get like needled into the dirt whenever I do try to do it in a live cash game. But that's another story for another day. And this is a really long way for me to say I raise pocket kings under the gun and then I pass it button calls. So it heads up to a flop of king 9-4 with two clubs. This isn't a rocket science. I've top set against a passive opponent. I go ahead and see bet for value. I make it 20 and they throw in the call. The turn is the eight of spades. Not really much more to say about this hand. I have a nutted hand against a passive opponent who I think has a lot of flush draws in their range, a bunch of King X combinations in their range. So still got a bet for value. I make it 60 and they throw in the call. So it heads up to the river, which is the eight of clubs. Absolutely beautiful river. Not only does the front door flush get in, but we make a full house to actually beat it anyway. Now I think it's an interesting spot whether we want to rip it all into or check. The main reason I would like ripping it all in for value is 
if the opponent does have a King X combination, they're definitely just going to check it back, particularly on this river when the flush draw gets in. So it might be the best way to actually get value from that hand if it does call the all in. Having said that, I think checking's a little bit better just because if I do check it over to them, they're going to bet with all their flushes anyway and probably call the check raise, probably their 8X combinations as well. And we just allow them to bluff if they did float two streets with like Jack 10. So I check it over to them. They go ahead and bet 75. Now we have the most no brainer decision of the entire hand. I rip it all in for 295 and the villain calls. I show my full house and then the opponent sort of mucks frustratedly and they accidentally expose the seven of hearts. So I guess the opponent was calling me down with eight seven there, but doesn't really matter we're going to rake in this pot with our second nuts here let's go next up we've got another button straddle on and then a tight aggressive under the gun player goes ahead and makes it 25 the action falls to my cutoff and we look down at yet another premium we've seen a few of them this week pocket queens i go ahead and three bet it to 90 and then the villain calls so we heads up to a flop of king queen eight rainbow the villain checks it over to me I have a middle set here. I'm gonna bet for value. I make it 100 and the villain calls. The turn is the ace of diamonds. So Jack 10 to get in as a straight, but when the villain checks it over to me, I'm not so scared of the nuts and I'm not gonna continue betting my set for value. This turn is actually really good to be honest because the villain probably has all the ace jack and ace 10 suited combinations that floated on the flop with a guard shot. Plus now I beat ace king, which I think the opponent is probably gonna have all nine combinations off since people don't four bet that hand in Tampa. So I keep betting for value. I make it 150 and then the villain calls. So we're in a great spot going to a river, which is Nine of Hearts, beautiful river. We were just glad to not see a four liner be put out there. When the villain checks it over to me, this is an absolute no brainer, all in spot in my opinion. Sure, the opponent could have Jack 10 or trapped aces or kings, but if we're so scared of those monsters under the bed, we're gonna miss all the value from the ace king offsuit combinations, from the pocket eight combinations, ace queen. And if they do wanna hero off with ace jack or ace 10, we definitely wanna give them the opportunity to do so. I rip it all in here and then the villain thinks about it for a little bit, loving that we're not getting snap called here before eventually throwing in the call. We love that even more. I show my pocket queens, their hand goes in the muck and we rake in this pot. Let's go. Let's see if we can keep the ball rolling even further. It's been, it's been a rolly ball rolling vlog, that's for sure. Anyway, under the gun goes ahead and makes it 15. They get two callers and then I'm in the big blind with ace four of clubs. Probably a good spot to just go ahead and call, closing the action. I get I get baited by the opportunity to take an aggressive line. I mix in the squeeze here. I three bet it up to 80. I guess I think calling's boring because I love squeezing, particularly in this week. I make it 80 and then only the under the gun player in the button call. So we're three ways to a flop of King eight deuce with two hearts and one club. The action's on me here and we do have a few backdoor draws, but I don't really like bluffing out of position multi-way. So I think checking's probably the best play. Try and see a turn. I get baited by the aggressive line again. Maybe having a bit of a discipline issue in the, some of these hands this video. I go ahead and make it 80 and then at least somewhat works because the under the gun player folds, but button calls. So we're heads up to a turn, which is the three of clubs. Wow, what a good turn here. Steel wheel, straight flush draw. I didn't like my C bet on the flop, but now that we're here with this hand, I actually think it's a no brainer spot to continue. It's semi bluffing now because we do have so much equity. I think unless the opponent does have King 10 or better, they're going to be pretty hard pressed to call. And we do have a little bit under one pot size bet. So I think it's a pretty clear decision to go all in here as a semi bluff. That's what I do. I go ahead and rip it all in and the button folds. Let's go. We take down this pot with our semi bluff. Heck yeah, buddy. Next up, I'm in the hijack with pocket tens. I go ahead and make it 25. I'm still messing around with this 5X open size experiment. And maybe there's some merit to it because I get three different callers. So we go four ways to a flop of ace 10 10. No, I'm not joking. We flop quads. We had the straight flush earlier. Now we have quads. We are smashing flops. Let's go. When the action checks me, however, despite smashing this flop so hard, I decide to mix in a sneaky trap here. Definitely want to give the opponents to, uh, an opportunity to bluff or even if a flush draw or a straight draw catches a free card. Yeah, I'm not going to be that mad when I have the nuts. 
So I go ahead and check it over, cut off checks, and then the button goes ahead and bets 50. So thank God we got a biter, we get some action. When the action falls back to me, still want to continue with the trap. I throw in the call here, the cutoff folds, and then we are heads up to a turn, which is the eight of diamonds. I check it over the villain, then they go ahead and bet 100. I think check raising on this straight would be less of a mistake than check raising on the flop. Having said that though, I still think it's a mistake. I think if I check raise here, I'm gonna get a lot of folds, particularly when I block all of the trip combinations on this board. I think it's very likely the opponent has an ace or maybe a royal flush draw. And a royal flush draw probably will call a check raise, but I think most of their ace-ex combinations are gonna fold. They might put me on a 10. So I think we just have to continue with a trap here and just play the river as best we possibly can. So I throw in the call and then we do get to see that river, which is the queen of diamonds. Now here's where things get really interesting. I labeled the opponent as passive. So I definitely think, even though that betting into us twice is really, really strong, we just know that they don't have a completely nutted hand on this board. Maybe pocket eights or pocket aces that traps preflop, but I think that's so much less likely than the ace king combinations, ace queen combinations, ace jack combinations. And I just don't think any of those hands are really going to bet once checked to, to be honest. So if I'm going to get value from that range, I need to do the betting myself. And betting here as a lead is kind of face up, particularly when King Jack gets in, but I still think it's the best option because I really don't think the opponent, even if they do bet with some of those hands, I really don't think they're going to call, call a check raise anyway. So I think it's a good spot to lead. So I go ahead and make it 400 and then the villain calls pretty quickly. Obviously we're pretty happy about that. We do show our quads and then the opponent marks. So don't know what they actually had. I think it's very likely they did have an ace. We're not gonna care, we rake in this pot. And then we go on the board for a high hand. We end up winning the high hand for $105. Cool. What an epic first week back in Tampa. Absolutely smashed the boards. Had really, really good results this session too. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel to see if we can keep the momentum rolling in the next week in Tampa. But for now, I'm out of here. Peace.